welcome to episode 7 of my How to Backpack series. This episode is going to be covering wayfinding, how to get to your trailhead, and how to get to your campsite. Come along on the adventure and let's learn together. So let's start off with driving to the trailhead in chronological order. Before you leave, it's important to check your GPS route. I've had it happen to me numerous times where my Google Maps has tried to take me down a road that's been closed for a very long time. It tells me a very promising arrival time. I go for it, and then I have to go on an hour and a half detour around it to actually get where I'm trying to go. Research ahead so you know the road closures around the area and navigate appropriately. Correct that computer. It can't get absolutely everything perfectly. I personally recommend GPS apps such as Waze or Google Maps because they actively update with traffic. So if there's a really bad crash, it'll automatically route you around that and get you there in the quickest time possible. It also gives you an estimate for what time you're going to arrive and it helps out by giving you an indication of what the speed limit is in that area. Definitely some really good tools to help you out. On Waze also, other users can put on where there are hazards on the road or perhaps where there's a speed camera. So that can really help out drivers and make the drive a lot less stressful and more efficient. I would recommend bringing some snacks and drinks for the car as well. You might want them on the way up, so you don't want to be draining the resources from your backpack if there isn't water at the trailhead. So maybe bring some snacks. Also, I really like having snacks waiting for me in my car when I get back at the end of a long backpacking trip. So we had a bit of a misadventure going through uh, Forest Road 142A. It was a little bit bumpy and there essentially was this cliff that even with my 8.4 inches of ground clearance would have been very, very sketchy. And coming back up that was my other concern. It looked very bad. So we turned around and we're going a little bit further west in West Clear Creek to the bullpen they used to Sometimes you have to make those executive decisions where you consider your own safety and you know your assets and what you really want to go and spend your time doing. Um, you don't want to put yourself in danger, you don't want to put yourself in a bad situation. As my survival professor would say, you don't want to be a statistic. Now for on the trail. On trail, Hikers and bikes yield the equestrians, so the horseback riders. Then bikes yield the hikers. After that, downhill hikers yield the uphill hikers. This is kind of an unspoken rule of the hiking and backpacking community, and people can get pretty angsty if you don't follow it. So definitely pay attention when you're out there so you don't get some people angry and then feel bad. When you're hiking, don't blast music off of your little speaker. This disturbs other visitors and the wildlife, and not everyone's a big fan of Nicki Minaj, so really just keep that to yourself, okay? As you hike down the trail, pay attention to some of the large landmarks, say maybe a really jagged looking ridge line, a really pointed spire, or maybe a river that goes next to the trail. These will give you really good clues to see where you're at on the trail. Maybe the river bends a little bit to the left, so then you can look. Okay, so I'm walking this way. Oh, I see this is where the river bends this way. I'm probably right around this area. It makes the wayfinding a little bit easier. And if you pay attention to your map, you're gonna know when your crossings are coming up so that you don't get turned around and get lost. As you're going for your hike, it's also very important to stay adequately hydrated and fueled. Take a few snack breaks. Take your time and really enjoy the nature. Your body will appreciate it more and the hike will be a lot more fun and a lot more enjoyable, I promise. Personally, I recommend a snack break to stop, take the shoes off every three to six hours. Let the shoes dry out, let the socks dry out, give yourself a good break. I know I take several breaks throughout the day, but I take many of them while I'm hiking. I'll just munch down a cliff bar or something. But it's really important to plan ahead that you're gonna take a break in a really great shady spot or maybe buy a water fill up area where you can really suck down some water and hydrate really well ahead and then fill up on your water, say it's a dry area. Sometimes you have to follow a trail that goes through an area that can't be clearly marked by a footpath. So you might see things such as cairns, which are little piles of rocks along the trail. We had one of those on our recent trip to West Clear Creek where the trail crossed a river. Obviously a clear footpath couldn't get through this river and stepping stones weren't really an option either because it was so deep. There were two massive piles of rocks that 
opposing ends of this creek, so we knew we had to cross in this spot. You may also see this on trails that are on just slabs of sandstone, or you might see in forested areas instead of a footpath of blaze, which I spoke a little bit about those on my cabin loop backpacking trip, which you can find up there. It's very important to unclip your bag from yourself so that if you fall in the creek during a river crossing such as this, that if you fall in, you don't sink to the bottom with your bag if it's not floatable enough. Buoyant, actually. It's not buoyant enough. Thank you so much for watching today's video. If you've liked the series thus far, please consider hitting that subscribe button and ring the bell icon so you get a notification whenever I post a new video. New video is out every Monday at 5 p.m. And down in the comments section, if you have any questions, please let me know. Thank you so much and have a great day.